She was asking to be murdered, wasn't she? Once Seddon had his hands on all of her cash. She was just a liability. It was a lot of money in 1910. Certainly, no lawyer would have advised such a show of trust. You must keep an open mind if you're speaking for the defense. I have to believe he didn't do it. No, 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 no. What you believe isn't at issue. Your job is to convince the jury that the Crown has failed to make its case against the accused beyond reasonable doubt. The chemist claimed it was Seddon's daughter who bought the arsenic. But she denies it. This evidence wasn't really tested. Do you think you could have saved him from hanging? <laughs> could have done better than Edward Marshall Hall, one of the truly great advocates. <laughs> well, I might have been a lawyer. I've had the opportunities. But you will have them, Venetia. You will have them. One day, you're going to be a great advocate, too. Murderers do not usually give their victims notice. This is one death which comes mercifully unburdened with the knowledge of the terror to come. When Venetia Aldridge could see, prepared herself to enter the number one court of the Old Bailey in the case of Regina versus Ash. She wasn't to know that she had only 10 days, four hours and 50 minutes left to live. The defendant claims that at the time of his aunt's brutal murder, he was several miles away. But do you have any doubt as to who it was leaving number 397 Westway at a quarter past 11 on that night? No. I have no doubt at all. Do you see that man in court? Yes. Could you point him out to us, please? Gary Ash, the defendant. Thank you, Mrs. Scully. Miss Aldrich. She has to discredit Mrs. Scully. I'm sorry we have to go through everything again, Mrs. Scully, but your evidence has been so clear, I'm sure it won't take us long. Mrs. O'Keefe hadn't lived in Westway for very long, had she? Two years. A time when the neighborhood was changing a great deal. Houses being demolished, old friends moving, different kinds of people moving in. 
It was a decent street once, a decent community. You said that Mrs. O'Keefe had a lot of visitors. There was a lot of noise, a lot of coming and going. She wasn't the sort of neighbour I was used to. Not the sort of person with whom you could form any kind of friendship? No. Or her nephew? No. But that's got nothing to do with seeing him. No, of course not, Mrs. Scully. It just helps us all if we can get a very clear picture of Mrs. O'Keefe. Do you think he killed his aunt? The real question is whether Venetia can create enough doubt to stop the jury convicting. Now, how did you feel about Mrs. O'Keefe's friends? Friends is one word. What word would you use? They were all men. Clients would be nearer the truth. A lot of men came in and out of Mrs. O'Keefe's house, constantly observed by you both day and night. But on the night in question, you saw no one? You say the only person you saw leaving number 397 was Gary Ash? That's right. And he left by the front door. Now, was that usual? No, the back door was because of his motorbike. The spectacles you're wearing today, Mrs. Scully, are they new? Yes. I got them on my birthday. Which was? November the 23rd. Are you sure about that date? That's, uh, five weeks after the death of Mrs. O'Keefe? Yes. Can you tell the court why you changed your glasses? I'd been meaning to for some time. I was having trouble with my old ones. What sort of trouble? It was the television, really. It was getting so that I couldn't see the faces. Your television set is how far away from you when you're sitting in your living room? Eight feet, ten feet? I don't know. Let me see if I can help. Uh, my lord, may I approach the witness? About this distance? A bit less. Here. That's about it. Mrs. Scully, you have just told the court that you couldn't comfortably see your television set at ten feet. Yet you have sworn on oath that you recognised my client at twenty feet on a dark night. Now, can you be sure that it wasn't some other young man leaving the house? One of Mrs. O'Keefe's many friends who came and went by the front door, not the back. Someone the same age, the same height. Can you be absolutely sure? I thought it was Gary Ash. You thought it was Gary because he lived there. You would expect it to be him. Turning point. But could you really see him plainly? Can you be sure, Mrs. Scully? I suppose it could have been someone else, someone like him. But I thought at the time it was Gary Ash. You thought at the time it was Gary Ash, but it could have been someone like him. Precisely. It was a natural mistake, Mrs. Scully, but I suggest to you that it was a mistake. Thank you. who has been purloining my mineral water? <laughs> no, on oath, Desmond. Valerie, if anyone so much as touches that water, please point out that it is not the property of Chambers, but only of the member who has purchased it. Yes, Mr. Ulrich. Thank you. Nothing safe in a den of barristers, Desmond. Absolutely. 
The Pendle brief is in your office, Mr. Ulrich. They would like an answer by this afternoon, if possible. If the fee is right, Harry, all things are possible. <laughs> Yuck! You know what he's put in here, Mr. Norton? Blood. Oh, it's all right, Miss Caldwell. <laughs> it's his own. <laughs> uh, Mr. Ash, is it true that on the night of her death you argued with your aunt in the Duke of Clarence? Yes. Can you tell us what the argument was about? She wanted me to take photographs of her with men having sex. I've done it before, but I hated it. I said I wasn't going to do it again. But she was very drunk. And I walked out. I needed time to think about what I was going to do. I knew I had to move on. You wanted to leave your aunt? Oh. Well, part of me wanted that. Part of me wanted to stay. I've been in and out of homes all my life. Local authority care, or a dozen foster parents. I didn't want to do the things my aunt made me do. I didn't want her to live the way that she did. But I think she needed me. And it was home. And that's not an easy thing to give up. After you left the Duke of Clarence, you only returned home several hours later, and no one saw you during that time. Well, I was just walking. Shepherd's Bush, South Kin. I mean, there's people everywhere, but they don't see you. What happened after you arrived home? I could see. I could see straight away that she was dead. And what did you do? I called the police. And waited for them to come. Gary. Did you love your aunt? I was very fond of her. I was sorry for her. I don't know if I know what people mean by love. Ladies and gentlemen, remembering those obscene photographs, you may wonder why Gary Ash didn't leave his aunt before. He has told you why. Mrs. O'Keefe was his only living relation. The home she provided was the only home he had ever known. I don't think we can underestimate what that means. On the night of the murder, he walked the streets, unseeing and unseen. He returned home to the horror of that blood-splattered sitting room. No forensic evidence links him with the crime. No blood on his clothes, no blood on his person, no fingerprints on the knife. No one saw him enter or leave Mrs. O'Keefe's house at the time of her death. Now, Mrs. Scully thought she saw someone like Gary at a time when she couldn't see the faces on her television screen. One of Mrs. O'Keefe's many clients could have called that night, and one did, a man who brutally murdered her. That was her tragedy. It is also the tragedy of the young man sitting in this court today. If you believe, beyond reasonable doubt, that my client murdered his aunt, then you must return a verdict of guilty. But if, after considering all the evidence, you have a reasonable doubt 
then it is your duty to return a verdict of not guilty. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I shall miss most, the lighting of the lamps. I used to like watching for the lamplighter. And then when it ended, it seemed as if a whole era had gone forever. Well, this place is going to miss you. <laughs> I'm sure that Chambers takes it for granted that I'll succeed you. Venetia is interested. Venetia. It's the first I've heard of it. She's never shown the slightest desire to become head of Chambers. And when you, when you were ill, all she had to say was she'd rather leave the tedious chores to other people, me. I think she has ambitions to become a judge. Succeeding me will be important. Well, Venetia is not a conciliator. Her only contribution to Chambers' meetings is to disagree with everyone else. Is a conciliator what we need? She is probably our most distinguished lawyer. Well, I think that's arguable, Hubert, but she won't make a good head of Chambers. Anyway, do we really want a criminal lawyer? It's a very snobbish view. Justice, rights, liberty, all things we are having to think a lot harder about. It's the heart of what Venetia does. I thought winning at any price was. This can wait till the meeting. Well, I take it that I am still your choice to succeed? If it's the will of Chambers, yes, of course. But if Venetia wants it, I don't see how she can reasonably be rejected. It goes by seniority. Venetia is the senior. That is not good enough. Hubert, by God, that is not good enough. You have always led me to believe that I had your support. And I have covered up enough of your recent mistakes to earn it. If Venetia is serious about this, then I suggest that you do something to change her mind. It's nearly a month since I last saw you. Sir, you're going to win this one. Oh, I don't know. But we've got a good chance, which is a very long way from where we were when the trial started. Oh, Mark, I've missed you. God, I've been so tied up at the Commons. And now I've got this new appointment. Yes, yes, you told me, remember? Oh, yes. Well, I'm going to have to give all this up. So you should have some free time. What? Yes, the jury's coming back. Well, good luck, Venetia. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please answer the following question, yes or no. Have you reached a verdict on which you are all agreed? Yes. And how do you find the defendant, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Well done. You know your way out, Mr. Ash. Make quite a thing. I know where I come and get in trouble again. I'm sure there'll be no reason for our paths to cross. Good afternoon. <laughs> she had to put Ash in the witness box. He was a risk, but uh, he performed well. Yes. The prosecution really should have asked Ash how he knew about those glasses. <laughs> yes. Our usual spot for a cup of tea? I can't tonight. There's something I must do. You know, I belong. You seen a paper? No, I haven't got a news one either. He's been acquitted. They said he had a clever lawyer. I knew Gary Ash wasn't a killer, no matter what else he'd done. <laughs> 
You still want to believe in him after everything he did to you? I think he killed that poor woman, and so do you. No. The jury believed him. You know him better than any jury. Couldn't you have asked the driver to help you with that? I'm capable of doing it myself. Just lift it up. You really could have given me more than 24 hours' notice. I'm 18. I told you I wasn't staying at school any longer than I had to. It's not my fault you don't listen. Mrs Buckley knew she'd have to move upstairs after you came home, but she wasn't amused when I told her she had to do it last night. <laughs> That's what you pay her for, isn't it, Mummy? To do what you tell her. Don't. Just... <sighs> I think that's everything, Miss Aldridge. I do appreciate this, Mrs Buckley. Look, if there's anything you need in the attic flat... Oh, no, it's very comfortable. You see, the only person who's in a state about your daughter coming home is you. You will treat Mrs Buckley with courtesy, Octavia. I've accepted your decision to leave the convent, but I do not expect my house to be disrupted. All right. Excuse me. Look, I'm sorry, love, right, but I've just come off my bike. I like my arms in bits. I don't suppose I could run it under attack, could I? See, I'm not being funny, but if I leave it out here, it's going to end up being thrown in the back of a dust cart, do you know what I mean? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll see you later when I come pick it up, yeah? What, well, tonight? Yeah. Yeah, if you want. Look, I was just thinking, there must be something I can do to say thank you. Don't be silly. Well, I mean, why don't you even let me buy a drink? You know. Good Samaritan. <laughs> I don't even know your name. Gary. I'm Octavia.
lucky, Mr. Cartwright. Different day, different judge. We might not have had the same decision. Oh, we make our own luck. You made mine today and showed yourself a champion of liberty. Very good for the image. Yes, well, I was right about a point of law. Sometimes the principle is more important than the individual concerned. Well, I owe you more than money. There's still the matter of <clears throat> the last time you were in court, defended by Simon Costello. Now, from what you've already said... You know my acquittal had nothing to do with his efforts. Exactly. Rumour has it that several jurors were suborned. No one can prove they were bought off. And I'm not about to admit it. I'm not interested in what you did or didn't do, Mr Cartwright. I'm only interested in how much Mr Costello knew. Well, I'm not saying anything happened. And I'm sure Costello won't either, because he was paid a very hefty bonus to keep his mouth shut. He knew during the trial. Oh, he knew. But I've never had this conversation, Miss Aldridge. Of course not. Good afternoon, Mr. Cartwright. Good afternoon, Miss Aldridge. I went there. Congratulations. I thought you'd had enough of the old Bailey to last a lifetime. I take it you two know each other. Yes. We're in love. <sighs> well, congratulations hardly seem in order, Octavia, given your choice of lover. I've always assumed that if intelligence wasn't your strong point, you at least had a sense of self-preservation. Oh, I think Octavia's old enough to make her own decisions, then not you? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we need to talk. You'd better come with me. Come on. See you Just come on. Yes. Come as soon as you can. I'll cook some supper. Presumably you weren't introduced to him at a convent disco. <laughs> no. He crashed his bike at the end of the road. I helped him, that's all. When was this? A week ago. I can't seriously believe this man loves you. Yes, he does love me. But just because you don't doesn't mean no one else ever will. You do know who he is. Yes. He's told me. I know his mother checked him out when he was only seven, and that was only the I beginning. I am familiar of... with his life. His mother told the local authority she was frightened of him. A seven-year-old boy. That's why he was in care. Every adult he ever met let him down. And I bet they all came up with excuses for it. I've seen enough of that to know what it means. Oh, so that's what you've got in common. You're another abandoned child. Is that because your father left us or because of the extremely privileged upbringing that I forced upon you? <laughs> uh, now I see why we've got so few family photos. You should have framed some of your bank statements, Mum. I think Gary Ash's immediate past should concern you more than his childhood. A week ago, he was in court accused of murdering his aunt. But he didn't do it. Oh, look, she was a horrible woman who was always having men back to her house. It was one of them that killed her. Gary wasn't even oh. near the place at the time. I am familiar with the defence, Octavia. Look, he didn't do it. You know he's innocent. You told the court he was innocent. My job is to test the prosecution case. I have explained all this to you before. There was reasonable doubt about Gary Ash and he was acquitted. No, he was acquitted because he didn't do it. He can put all of that behind him now. Is there any reason why he shouldn't? Oh. Gary Ash's relationship with his aunt wasn't a normal one. He was almost certainly one of her lovers. <laughs> no, that's not true. Are you having sex? <laughs> I don't think that's any of your business, actually. Oh, no. No, not, not yet. Gary thinks we ought to wait. It's been so quick since everything's happened. Oh, that's very clever. Oh, God, he can't win, can he? 
It's wrong if we are making love and it's wrong if we're not. Do you think it was a coincidence that he crashed his bicycle in Pelham Place a few days after the trial? He didn't know who I was, Mum! Octavia, can you be so stupid? When Ash was 15, he was at a special school outside Norwich. There was a social worker, Michael Gates. He really cared for Ash, believed he could help him, perhaps loved him. Ash tried to blackmail him with an accusation of sexual assault. I don't believe any of this. It's not perhaps the worst thing he has ever done, but it explains why I think of him as evil. If he's so evil, why the hell did you defend him? I want to talk to you. Right, I'll drop in later. Brian Cartwright? Just been in court with him. Oh, I gather he was acquitted. Yes, as he was when you defended him. Do I need to say more here? Oh, no, come along, Valerie. I want those letters out today. Well, Cartwright's lying. Why should he? Probably to impress you with how clever he is. Look, he didn't tell me about suborning jurors. You know, if he had, I would have done something about it. With a bonus he was offering you? I don't have to listen to this. I don't know how much of what Cartwright told me is the truth, but enough. He won't admit it publicly, so I can't have you thrown out of the profession. However, when I become head of chambers, you will be looking for new accommodation and I will make sure you never take silk. Simon, you won't become a QC as long as I live. Hello, Mark. I need to talk. Can you come over to Pelham Place for half an hour? If it could, I shouldn't have rung. Oh, please. It doesn't matter what she says. She can't do anything. I did say she always gets her own way. Not with me. Not anymore, not now. I've got you. Well, I've only just found you. I, mean, I don't want to lose you. What? You're not going to lose me. You heard this? This is wicked. Well, I'm sure that once she's made her point, she'll get bored with him. But what's he up to? Oh, I don't know. It has to have something to do with money, hasn't it? Well, it's easy if it has. Pay him off. Oh, darling, it's not the sort of thing I do every day. No, I, I have to think about it. I mean, the man is no fool. I don't know how to handle it. So far, I've handled it very, very badly. Look, Venetia, I've got to get back to the commons. I'm sure you can handle your daughter's boyfriend problem without my help. Oh, thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. The real reason I came... Well, we did have to talk. I'm sure you've been thinking along the same lines, hmm? What lines? I don't think we should see each other again. It's too difficult. For both of us. Too dangerous, perhaps. Well, it's not as though we've seen a great deal of each other in recent weeks, anyway. Oh, that's very neat, Mark. You were happy enough to deceive your wife before, but a ministerial position clearly concentrates the mind. So, I'm the price for a dutiful and, more to the point, silent wife? Neither of us made any promises. It was never about that. Anyway, Lucy doesn't know about our affair. Of course she knows. She knows you better than you know yourself. If she's kept quiet until now, it was because it was in her interest to do so until she had the right lever. Well, don't be ridiculous. It profits a man nothing to give his soul for the whole world, but for number two to the Minister of Sport. Oh, my God. Oh, my God.
Well, Lucy's pregnant, Venetia. What a charming Leva. I didn't think she could have children. Well, it just happened after eight years. All done by prayer and lighting candles, or was it the immaculate conception? Does she know I aborted your child 12 months ago? Of course not. I saw her on the news a couple of weeks ago on some pro-life vigil. Pity if she found out. You wouldn't do that to her. No, 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 no. Not to her. Maybe to you. Oh, come on. You were horrified when you found out you were pregnant. You never wanted another child. You didn't care very much for the one you've got. From a solicitor. Uh, well, they should be over here by ten o'clock. I said I wanted them on my desk when I got in this morning. Yes, well, um, I'll give them a ring, try and speed things up. The concept of speed in these chambers hasn't changed since the 19th century. You really are an anachronism, Harry. I see no earthly reason why she should. Venetia does not listen to anybody. I haven't told Lois yet. Much as I love my niece, I can't fight all your battles for you. Venetia means what she says. You are a competent lawyer, not a clever one. Now, my advice to you is don't get out of your depth again. Oh. Oh, and Simon, start looking for new chambers. Venetia always means what she says. It's Cartwright's word against yours. The man's a show-off, that's all. He may sound off to Venetia, but he won't stand up and say he was involved in bribing jurors. Oh, stuff, Cartwright. It's what Venetia Aldridge can do that matters. Can she really stop you becoming QC? Yep. We need the money that's going to bring in. We've been living off the promise of it for years. Then you'd better get your uncle bloody Desmond off his high horse and on to our side. Oh, God. His best advice was to look for new chambers. I'll talk to him. But it's really down to you, Simon. You have to stop Venetia Aldridge, and quickly. I'm going to offer Ash several thousand pounds. Well, <laughs> I'm prepared to go to ten if necessary. Well, that's a lot of money, and if that's what he's after, he'll be back for more. <sighs> if he takes the money and goes, Octavia will know why he's dumped her. Even she isn't stupid enough to forget that. That's why I need a witness. I approach Ash, offer him the money, then arrange to give it to him in the presence of someone else, someone who could tell Octavia what he says. <laughs> well, she won't believe me. Uh, are you asking me? Well, is that so unreasonable? So surely there's um, someone in the family or um, an old friend. I tried an old friend last night. Are you telling me you won't help me, Drysdale? We are both lawyers, Venetia. These are very murky waters. Don't imagine you're going to become the next head of Chambers if that's why you think your reputation needs protecting. That is a matter for the whole Chambers. And the whole Chambers knows you for the weak and indecisive man you are. <laughs> yes! I'm sorry, Miss Aldridge, but... I can't cope with Octavia turning my kitchen upside down. She, she's got her own flat. Oh, I'm not turning anything upside down. Shut up! Mrs. Buckley, I will sort this out in the morning. I am working and I cannot be interrupted by a domestic argument.
this place has stagnated for long enough, under you it would simply rot away. However much you covet the position, there is nothing you can do to stop me from becoming head of chambers. I can do a great deal more than you think, Venetia. And I shall. Mr. Lantern may still be at home. Would you see if you can get him? Morning, Mr. Langton. Yes. I've got Mr. Norton for you. Uh, I'm glad I caught you, sir. Something's happened. Something terrible. Yes, Harry, absolutely. Do nothing. Let no one in the room. I'll call the police myself. I wish to speak with Commander Adam Dalglish. This is Hubert St. John Langton. Yes, I'm afraid it's much more than urgent. great dignity. She wouldn't want... What I mean is the press, Chambers, or else... Yes, I know. I'm aware of the attention the press gave her in life, and I'm sure it won't be any different in death. What the hell's going on, Hubert? Is this all true? This is Commander Dalgleish, Desmond Ulrich. Oh, I was going to make a bad joke about my blood. I'm glad I didn't. Your blood? Yes, yes, it's for a minor operation. I always like using my own blood. It was kept in the refrigerator. Somebody took it. I was going to suggest that if you needed something to investigate. Who else knew the blood was there? A number of people. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Norton, our chief clerk, Valerie, the secretary, uh, Mrs. Carpenter, she's one of the cleaners. I didn't like the refrigerator cleaned while the blood was there. I take it that you are going to treat this as a suspicious death. Mr. Ulrich, I should be treating this as murder. Well, 
the blood certainly isn't hers. Either it was poured over the wig within the last three hours or it contains an anticoagulant. Yes, well, we can be fairly sure where he comes from. Indeed. <laughs> you have the better of me there, Commander. It'll need matches, of course. Ah. Uh, Rigo, well developed. Probably died about eight o'clock last night. No obvious wound to the head, but, uh, I imagine you've already spotted this. And the whip? Long, thin, rapier like. Both sides sharp. At least four inches long, he was either very lucky or very skilled, a thrust straight to the heart. Uh, I'll confirm it on the table, but uh, death must have been instantaneous. Mel. <laughs> Me and Auntie did it. I mean, I worked out the pattern, but it was like, oh, I did. It's crazy. <laughs> But it's wonderful. <laughs> it goes all the way up the landing as well. I mean, like, I was going to do the ceiling, but I don't know, I just never got around to it, you know what I mean? She was murdered. Come on. There's something else I want to show you. You took it? Yeah, before the police came. I always took photos of her on that divan. She knew what a good photographer I was. What she would have wanted. <laughs> if you or your mates get over that fence again, the next time I'll cut. Do you understand? Sorry, mate. Kids, <laughs> what are they like, eh? <laughs> I mean, they're just all barbarians today, ain't they? <laughs> God, you look terrified. You OK? Who did you think it was? The police. I tore up the picture. I flushed it down the loo. I was afraid they'd find it. I'm sorry. Gary, you don't need to test me. Look, if people are going to let you down, it's just nice to know. Gonna let you down. Now 
we can go.